Cześć, dzień dobry. Hi, welcome. Magda Kopaczewska, Investor Relations, LPP. I'm Przemysław Rutkiewicz, Vice President of the Management Board. Welcome to our conference uh, for financial results for the first quarter, where we will be discussing what were the key corporate events since the last meeting we had. We will also tell you about our financial results and our plans. Uh, at the end, of course, as usual, uh, we invite you to ask questions. We will start with key corporate events and Przemek, uh, you will take the floor and discuss uh, Russia and Ukraine situations and I will come back with uh, telling you about trends. Okay, let's start with key corporate events for the first quarter. Let me just remind you that these are uh, February, March and April months. The good news is that we are resuming our business operations in Ukraine. Uh, we reopened in April our uh, online store there uh, with the reservation that uh, it only operates um, as a courier company that indicates where they can reach um, with parcels. These are mostly uh, collection pickup points and not uh, local addresses. And we have to have it by way of prepayments. We also resumed um, the, the store um, operations located in Western Ukraine because we have to look uh, after the safety of our customers and our employees. Uh, we keep reopening stores with uh, shortened working hours and only people who are volunteering to work, um, work there. Taking into account that uh, the supplies uh, there and deliveries were from the February month, we decided to resume right now all the deliveries to the op operating stores uh, with the new uh, summer collections. So from June on, the first transports uh, with collections uh, for the summer are going there and we are still helping Ukraine. Our company uh, devoted 20 million zloty to this assistance, both in Poland and in Ukraine. And it concerns uh, in-kind assistance and um, financial assistance. In this peak of exodus of people from Ukraine, in Poland, um, uh, during the auspice, under the auspices of Umbrella, we had 250 people, both employees and uh, their families, that we were taking care of, and we are still taking care of them. A war in Ukraine means difficult business decisions. We decided to uh, sell the Russian subsidiary. As you remember, in March, we closed all our stores in that country. In April, we made a decision to sell the subsidiary and in May, uh, that was uh, concluded and sold. It was a tough decision. We decided also that our uh, trademarks and logos uh, cannot exist in that country anymore. So the contract mostly contains um, uh, the statement that uh, the new investor will not be able to use our logos after the sale is effected and um, they have been changed. You will get to know the details of the transactions in the coming months uh, once we have uh, everything calculated properly and we are able to share this information and taking into account uh, the uh, talks with auditor how to uh, put this uh, transaction in our books, then we will share more details. Let's have a look at the map. Uh, it has changed considerably. As you can see, there is no Russia included in the uh, stores. At the end of last uh, year, it was over 2,200 stores in our portfolio. Now, after excluding the Russian stores, we have 1,716 as the number of stores at the end of the quarter, almost 1,000 in Poland. 500 uh, in Europe and you will also find here what we call other regions. This is the category of the countries uh, with previous CIS uh, countries and Middle East countries. They are encompassed in this category. So a considerable change in the other regions. We marked that as of today um, about half of the stores are open and this is because in Ukraine where we have or had 159 stores, now we have 60 operational ones. We are trying in the coming days or weeks to open new uh, stores, 10 or 20 will, will be added to the open operations. 
Uh, the opening of stores in Ukraine uh, resulted from uh, the appeal of local uh, authorities that wanted to resume kind of normality there so that people could work, come to work, so that local authorities have taxes, uh, in, in influences uh, and incomes from financial incomes. And we joined the group of companies who start to reopen their businesses in Ukraine. When it comes to logistics improvements, uh, the fact that we are developing on other uh, markets, this also means further investment in logistics. The logistics invest, uh, infrastructure, as we informed you uh, during last meetings, this is mostly new uh, warehouse in Dresd Kujawski, which now is in full production capacity. We have 700 employees there and we are able from that uh, warehouse to send uh, goods to 1,000 stores simultaneously. And uh, 40 million pieces of goods is the storage capacity. So it's as if one uh, Polish citizen put one item there. So huge um, logistics space. And this is dedicated to um, traditional stores. Let's not forget, of course, about e-commerce. We started the construction of a new warehouse in Yashonka near Rzeszów. Also a big one on almost 70,000 square meters, similarly to the previous one, also state-of-the-art technology with uh, photovoltaic panels are in, um, installed there and some ecological solutions also um, implemented. We are also planning and we want to open this warehouse by the end of this year and it will service mostly e-commerce, not only in Poland, but also uh, Southern Europe, Czech Republic, Slovakia, uh, Hungary, and also, uh, of course, the Ukrainian market. Now, moving on, or actually staying with the topic of um, online sales, uh, Magda will discuss uh, the development of Sensei brand on the new markets. We are developing our Sensei brand online, uh, which is our advantage in this uh, segment of um, value for money. At the end of April, we launched uh, online stores of Sinse on new markets, which means Greece, uh, Spain and Italy. And we can uh, boast here that throughout the month of functioning, the first full month of functioning, which is May, the three e-stores in those countries, 6 million lot uh, um, revenues were generated. We also launched uh, an app for this brand. And this is the answer response to the increase in the interest of customers um, to purchase their um, clothing via mobile devices. From the level of Sensei app, the users may create uh, the shopping list, may check availability in stores, but also what is really cool, they can directly uh, share the products uh, in social media or to their friends, which is immensely popular among the customers of the younger generations, the Gen Z uh, customers. Uh, let's discuss the fashion trends now. Coming back to the offices and also coming back to um, business meetings and social meetings caused that after two years of pandemic, we uh, missed our uh, formal clothing. Formal, but in a different, uh, let's say, edition than pre-COVID situations. This is uh, mostly about the feminine collections. So uh, gray suits and white shirts, uh, not necessarily right now, these have been put aside, but what we see right now, this is like dopamine dressing trend, so formal clothing, but in very vivid, bright colors. These trends, um, when the rebound of demand has been observed, we have seen this in uh, the results of Mojito and Reserved brands. What is also very interesting is that in those two brands, we observe the trends at the same time. Because in the past, it happened that if one brand was doing better, at the same time, the other one was kind of a little bit worse. This time, the situation is different and we are immensely happy about that. Now, uh, to contrast from trends, let's discuss uh, the numbers. 
Uh, thank you. So the figures now, financial results for the first uh, quarter. First, I need to make a short introduction because this topic is a difficult one. It's uh, difficult to compare apples to apples, but let me try to distinguish. Last year, the first quarter was under the pandemic uh, topic and lockdowns. The first quarter of this year, 2022, started very well, but the outbreak of war uh, came in Ukraine. So this was the reason for our turbulence and some problems that we had um, at the end of February and beginning of March. Well, uh, lower sentiment, consumer sentiment, so slowdown of sales was observed. Uh, Mid-March, uh, this was a rebound of demand, but we had to close our stores first in Ukraine and then in Russia. So again, we have to say that it's very difficult to compare these two periods. On this slide, you can see on the left-hand side the amphitheater look uh, of the lockdown situation divided by months and countries. The first quarter of last year, as you can see, was strongly affected by COVID and lockdown situation. A lot of stores were closed on the right. However, you can see that this is empty, which is good news. So there were no uh, pandemic-related lockdowns, but the Ukrainian and Russian markets, uh, these were closed. Another topic related to the change of um, our financial statements the decision to sell the Russian subsidiary at the end of the first quarter caused that we had to uh, change the classification of uh, certain uh, items in our statements. So the results of the Russian subsidiary, subsidiary was shown in one line as uh, profit on the assets held for sale. Because this changed for the first quarter of this year, we also had to change uh, the previous um, statements of the first quarter of the previous year that we showed you last year. We have the two ways here. In some um, part of the presentation, this is according to the previous old information with Russia. And we also have this uh, statement for the first quarter of last year uh, calculated according to today's standard without Russia so as to compare data better. It will be very uh, difficult to talk about this, but I will try to make it as simple as possible. Summing up uh, the first quarter, we have 1,760 stores at the end of the quarter, uh, minus 3.5% in the floor space. It's without the Russian stores. It's difficult to talk about like for like because we are comparing to the pandemic situation, but over 50% uh, LFLs means that customers willingly returned to the stores, which will be also shown in further slides. Uh, traditional stores record better, better sales. In online, we have uh, 32 um, countries, we have uh, almost billion uh, revenues and we are present uh, in 38 countries with our stores. Take a look here on the left hand side, you can see uh, group revenues. On the one hand, we have uh, the historic values from the first quarter on, of 2020 until the fourth quarter of 2021. These are the same ones that we showed you during our previous presentations. And uh, reference in, um, the reference will be uh, to the corrected values. What is important is what you can see on the right-hand side. You can see the dynamics in the last column. You, as you can see, the Sensei brand had over 60% increase in sales. The first quarter of this year without Russia, first quarter in the previous uh, table before restatement with Russia. You can compare this and see the dynamic growth of Sensei both in the traditional stores and e-commerce. Very strong, only uh, almost 50% increase in Mojito brand. This is what Magda has just said. Returning to the formal clothing and uh, formal more elegant fashion and Mojito brand which suffered for the last two years is recording um, good results this year and this trend is also observed in the second quarter. Reserved um, was doing well but losing the eastern markets um, affected the sales and results and we have also crop and house 
uh, crop very popular in Russia and Ukraine. Uh, losing these uh, eastern markets is a huge problem and probably will constitute a, a challenge to uh, make up for that in other markets. This market is not so popular in the e-commerce sector. Uh, once I thought that it's uh, the young people who buy mostly online, but apparently uh, we have more sales um, better sales uh, in traditional stores and uh, women and children clothing this is the most popular in uh, online but since uh, is like a special case a new value for money value for money segment and uh, since has been recording good results everywhere take a look at the mid middle column we have 1 billion 200 over in the first quarter this is more than reserved result we have um, 1 billion, almost 100. This is the first time in history where Sensei exceeded reserved results. And it seems that in the quarters to come, the increases will be also observed. Uh, let's move now to e-commerce. On the left-hand side, you can see uh, the sales results uh, as we reported previously for previous, um, for pre previous uh, periods with Russia, comparing the first quarter of this year this is flat uh, sale year on year, almost 1 uh, billion online. You can see this clearly in the right hand side. The green, is, the green part is, a bit, uh, is much more smaller than um, previous periods. We're glad that still even our domestic Polish market um, records increases, 6% uh, increases online and very dynamic uh, European market, so apart from Poland, all the other countries in Poland, 20%, over 20% year-on-year increase there. One-third uh, of the whole revenues is the online sales. As you said, Magda, most uh, is generated by mobile devices. And the apps are gaining in popularity, therefore. We can add that most of our customers are women who are very willing to buy uh, online and offline. Uh, now divided by regions, uh, take a look here, a considerable change on this slide because it was um, usually a very big graph with CIS. We combined now CIS with Middle East and we have the new category that we call other regions. A considerable drop here, minus 73%. And we're, however, we are glad that in Poland and other uh, European countries, we have considerable um, increases, on, almost 100% in Europe, 60% in Poland. And we're glad that these markets are doing well. On the right, you can see the floor space. Uh, in Poland and Europe, we are able to increase um, commercial floor space. This is mostly related to Sinsei store openings, but also house and crop. The challenge for this year is um, making up for the gap uh, caused by the lack of stores in Russia so that other brands and other countries make up for that uh, gap that we observe now when we took out Russia. So right now, um, 50, uh, 50%, Poland is um, 45%, and quarter uh, before, Poland was below the 40% of the whole revenue. It's worth mentioning, I believe, that when we cannot sell in Russia and only have a limited uh, sale opportunities in Ukraine, the three key uh, countries, are about, apart from Poland, are Romania, Czech Republic and Germany. And it is on these markets where we will focus our uh, operations. But we are also thinking of the Southern European markets. Let's move on to gross margin. Uh, 53% lower than last year. This is the result of several factors. First of all, inflation producers, uh, inflations, uh, buying products in Asia. This has been getting more and more expensive, higher uh, dollar. This also affects the situation, but the surpluses of uh, stocks that we have caused by the closure of Eastern markets. So the goods that were dedicated to Ukraine and to Russia, they had to be redirected to Poland and other markets. But I must say that uh, no big uh, 
sell-ups were organized. We did it like delicately and um, followed the situation that we had in COVID. So trying to shift the collections um, from spring to autumn, not to sell off all the surplus in the one or two months, but to have smart management of the collections to work out the margins in the coming quarters as well. You can see this uh, in the graph on the right hand side. We do have the um, uh, all, almost three uh, do have the surpluses, but um, you can see that two and a half uh, thousands of the per square meters we have not recorded such results uh, before well ladies and gentlemen at this point where we have to uh, do something with the surplus uh, goods that we have that were devoted to the um, eastern markets maybe in the coming two three quarters we will face higher than normal um, inventory so Part of the collection that was dedicated to um, spring, we uh, reclassify this for autumn collections and we will try to have smart management of promotions in June, uh, a week before we started the sale period uh, for the very reason of getting rid of the surpluses, at least some parts. So good news is that we are managing the stocks better we are trying to sell them at full prices and on foreign markets we um, in other currencies than poland we have um, recovered and uh, rec we have been um, gaining good results so other currencies help us to improve the profit margins well on the other hand we had to raise prices in the first um, half of the year 8% increase, of course, apart from Sinsei, because that was a considerably lower increase, but other markets raised their prices by 8%. Uh, and we get asked whether we can observe right now that the demand is shifting towards the cheaper goods. And what Magda said, no, it's not observed right now, but it seems that um, Spring and summer is a good uh, period to sell very colorful collections, thank thanking all the ladies for purchasing our products and our collections. We see considerable interest in more expensive collections, so reserved collection or mojito collections. These are higher price point collections and they are selling well. Uh, the lowest price point uh, at Sensei brand, uh, they have been selling well always, but we can see the upward uh, trend. This is a kind of polarization of the trends. On the one hand, we have the cheapest ones. And on the other hand, we have um, the most expensive uh, styles for mojito or reserved. This is uh, possibly the psychological factor coming in place here. We have good weather, spring, uh, summertime. Uh, we have um, social events, uh, weddings. So this all helps. And uh, before the beginning of um, the summer holidays, uh, we will maintain these trends, possibly until the summer it will be good, and then we'll see. High inflation at some point uh, will probably cause that uh, the customers will uh, try to be more cautious uh, about their household budgets. But this is yet to come. We are now enjoying um, the good sales results. Maybe then the customers will choose Sensei brand. This is what we're counting on. Let's move on to a cost on the left-hand side. As usual, you can see the cost of own stores um, divided by three categories. What is still nice, as you can see, uh, the green costs, the rental costs are um, decreasing. So the Sensei uh, store openings, they um, are done on better terms right now than in huge shopping malls, so retail parks, um, in smaller towns, the Sensei stores, um, they have the lower rent. So they will be affecting the average for the whole group. Now in the middle, you can see HR costs. So these have been increasing and will probably be increasing still, uh, comparing to the first quarter of last uh, year where the lockdowns um, were introduced and uh, people were a lot of people were not working. So these costs were much lower. Other costs, 
materials, um, services, when we open new stores or when the stores operate. Uh, biggest increases, of course, energy costs, uh, over 80% increase year on year, as you can see. So considerable increases. But what I'm glad about, looking at the last four quarters, these represent similar values, 166 per square meter. On the right hand side, you can see considerable uh, increase in SGNA costs, uh, 340 as lot per square meter. We have to be careful here. This does not reflect entirely our situation because on the one hand, we have the comprehensive cost divided by a square meter, but e-commerce doesn't have any square meters to be measured against. So these costs will be increasing there. So starting from this quarter, we are, we are introducing new um, indicator percentage costs because we have varied costs here. 47% it was last year, quite considerable. And our goal is to go down to 40, 41% here. This year, without Eastern markets, this will probably not be possible. It will be around 43, 44%. But we will be looking at this um, indicator and um, making you, getting used to this uh, new indicator rather than cost per square meter. Uh, let's move on now to the next slide. A more difficult uh, chart this time. We have three columns with data and the last one with the change in percentage. So on the left-hand side, you can see before a restatement, so including Russia, and exactly the same uh, shape as we showed you last year. The middle column shows the data for the first quarter of last year after restatement, so after excluding Russia, and uh, getting this to the comparable state as uh, for the first quarter uh, of this year, we had 3 billion lot of revenues without uh, Russian sales. So 67% increase year on year on the whole markets without Russia. Uh, the gross profit margin uh, minus 1.3 percentage point because of the surplus uh, goods, but also because uh, the purchasing of goods is getting more and more expensive. Uh, SGNA costs, the Distracting that, without Russia, we have 36.1%. Uh, we see the EBIT at the level of 190 million slot, taking out uh, any uh, taxes and effects differences from the continued operations, almost um, 100 million slot. We have also the additional line here for the first time in our financial statement. So net profit from assets held for sale. And this is the only line. This is one line showing the results of the Russian company held for sale, actually sold already. 171 million profit. And overall net profit for the uh, group in this also with uh, Russia for continued operation and uh, Russian operations held for sale, we have 268 million lot, uh, much more than all what we had the year before. Let's have a look at uh, indebtedness level. We used to show you this net debt, IIS 17 uh, results. But because this IFRS 16 is the one that we adhere to now, we decided to change the presentation and show it according to the new values. Of course, in our investor materials, you will find uh, exact uh, delimitations of where we have this um, financial leasing data or any other data if you want to get more detailed information in the previous way we did it you can check this as well we also show you the cash minus the bonds and minus also uh, financial leasing according to um, ifrs 16 and we have net debt presented here and we used to show you a net cash 
So financially speaking, the situation is still good at the company, but we're, we're only changing our approach to net debt according to the new standard. Additionally, apart from in the net debt, we don't have 1.3 billion slotted that we have in the uh, cash funds and deposits. The regulations, the accounting regulations do not allow us to include this cash. If we could, then it would be much lower. On the right hand side, you can see our CAPEX, 263 um, million slotter without Russia. Previously, you see this with Russia, so the increase is not considerable year on year, but you can see that the first quarter of each year uh, is uh, increased and mostly due to new stores. Summing up the first uh, quarter of this year, what we can observe is still high sales dynamics. Uh, despite the situation of um, no Russian stores and uh, the situation in Ukraine, this is a good prognosis for the future. We can see a good rebound in sales in traditional stores. So we returned uh, to the stores after the pandemic, almost a billion e-commerce revenues and comparing the first quarter of this year to the previous year. Then it was easier to sell uh, in e-commerce because we had lockdowns, but now it's more difficult. Nevertheless, good dynamics um, is observed. I can share with you now that uh, the online sale online for May was higher by 30% year on year. So it's still visible that e-commerce is getting great results. Um, this is due to new markets, but also since size dynamic um, growth in e-commerce. When it comes to financial safe, safety, liabilities exceed uh, inventory still. And the fifth point, disposal of Russian business. Uh, we will discuss this more uh, in the next quarter, probably. Moving on to our outlook and plans. We are maintaining the targets that we showed in the previous quarter for the 2022. Um, we maintain the target of um, increase um, of 16 billion lot uh, plus 13 percent year on year despite the lack of russian markets and the ukrainian markets in one third of its operations what i told you about um, our development we are planning to open uh, over 400 new sense stores and other markets as well so as to make up for the gap um, that is caused by the lack of russian stores so the uh, fall in floor space will not be considerable, only several percent that we will manage to make up for that with the new stores and new markets to uh, fill the other markets and keep developing in our um, industry. Five billion online sales, this target has been maintained and uh, it was uh, only f four billion last year. The inflation, higher uh, dollar um, exchange, this margin will be lower than in previous year. And operating profit and EBITDA will also be lower. But today I'm uh, more optimistic about our margins because the first quarter showed that the drops were not so dynamic, so considerable as we previously um, assumed our plans were more pessimistic and we could translate this um, price increases into uh, the client and we can see that the product mix is nicely helping us to maintain the margin at uh, the level. It will be lower year on year but not as strongly as we previously assumed. Capex for this year, 1 billion slaughter seek over 60 million for stores alone. What about our opportunities? First of all, we see the higher willingness of customers to buy a clothes from the value for money segment where Sensei is positioned. When it comes to Sensei, we talk about offline and online sales. So the development of Sensei brand uh, on new markets in Southern uh, Europe, Greece, Italy, Spain, this is where we are planning to open the first uh, Sensei stores uh, as uh, also this year. 
And another opportunity is to translate uh, the inflation on the cost side into uh, the prices. So we will be thinking about making the prices a bit higher with such considerable inflation, we are forced to do that. The risks, still we have a lot of them. After the pandemic, we were hoping that uh, calmer times will come, but the war in Ukraine changes a lot in our plans. We are unsure how the war will translate uh, into um, the purchasing power of customers, increase of cost, inflation and some limitations in trade. This is a considerable risk and we will see in the quarters to come uh, how this is, um, how this is um, shown in the results. Maybe people will not uh, buy um, more expensive clothes and uh, exchange rate in relation to other currencies as we are operating on uh, markets where um, dollars and euros are used, we see that this is um, negatively affecting our profit margins. Let me remind you that uh, in the longer perspective, two or three, four years, our um, growth strategy is based on three pillars. First of all, reserved in the online sector, on the one hand, we want to expand the offer of the available products. Some of them are already available only online. And on the other hand side, we want to uh, access new markets and increase the appetite um, to exist in the Western markets. Also the app um, for reserved brand, which will include other markets, not only Poland soon. Then we have Sinsei in online, so app and entering new markets of the southern Europe. This is a good prognostic for us. If Sensei has recording has been recording such good results online, the stationary stores should also generate good results. So the third pillar is Sensei um, in traditional stores. Let's not forget about omnichannel. So combining the two distribution channel, this uh, has been very important to us. Let me just add, we mentioned that already, that we're expanding the offer of Sensei brand. This is not only fashion, but we also include homeware and various accessories and beauty products. Uh, that's right, uh, Sensei has been offering a pool of um, products uh, only available online. Uh, let me remind you about the dividend. This has already been going on. We uh, launched, uh, or general meeting actually decided that uh, 350 zloty per uh, share was agreed on. The first tranche was paid at the beginning of June. The second tranche will be paid on the 3rd of August, 30th of August. Uh, one more important information about um, ecology. Let me uh, give the floor to Magda. I'm pleased to inform that LPP, as the first Polish clothing company, joined SBTI, Science-Based Targets Initiative, which uh, is a scientific initiative that supports business in determining the way uh, to decarbonize their operations. So the first step of our company towards decarbonization was uh, to have a more detailed calculation comparing to the previous years, what is our carbon footprint in all three scopes and in all categories according to the guidelines of uh, GHG protocol. Uh, we completed this task this year and we defined the areas which generate uh, the most emissions. In our industry, uh, this is the scope three connected to uh, supply chain production, distribution, uh, usage and utilization of um, clothing. Right now at LPP, we are at this stage of defining the decarbonization strategy and SBTI will help us to determine ambitious and realistic at the same time goals of uh, reducing emissions in all those uh, three scopes. What is important, these targets will be verified and uh, scientifically assessed by SBTI and this will happen uh, uh, already this year, which we'll be happy to inform you about. Uh, let's move on now to the Q&A session. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for this part of the presentation. 
And let's see, we have a lot of questions already. The first question, what is the formula of the uh, sales agreement uh, for the Russia sale? How long will the process of the uh, investment uh, be going on? And when will you receive the um, payments out of this contract? Well, we got several offers for the sale or actually buying this business from us, but these offers were not a full offers. Somebody wanted to buy some parts of stores and another investor wanted just to take the um, goods from that uh, company. We decided to select the investor that would take uh, the comprehensive, the, the full business. Existing stores, contracts with landlords, contracts with warehouses, maintaining the um, consistency of the whole um, company, which is a more giving us more guarantee that the new investor will uh, be able to pay the uh, debt that the company had towards LPP for the goods sent there. So all the liabilities will be honored and uh, this is what we are taking, what, what we find important so that the employees can continue a career in that company. These decisions, of course, will be made by the new investors. We'll see what it's going to be like. It seems uh, to us that this offer is the best, financially speaking, and also having regard to um, getting the receivables for uh, selling the business. It will take several months, but we will keep you informed in the healthy report, probably in more detail. Next question is about competitors. After the closure of the stores of Orsay, do you think that your uh, sales will, um, will increase? Yes, we do think so. We think that, let me put it this way, uh, lower competition, this is, I think, visible right now. On the one hand, the pandemics. On the other hand, difficulty in supplying the stores, higher transport costs have already translated into the financial standing and possibilities of um, possibilities for the companies in our industry. The fact that we have the goods even in surplus translates in good um, sales results. This indicates that lower competition, some people closing, uh, some, some competitors closing their operations. This is, of course, favorable to us because we increase our share in the market. So withdrawal of um, several new companies is beneficial to us. Another question, we have seen this uh, a lot. This is about Serbian uh, online store. When are we planning to launch it? We are working on it. I cannot give you the proper date, but I can say that it's still going to happen this year. Why the write-offs uh, for Russian business? Um, this business uh, was decided to be sold and looking at the investors, we see that the stores can be uh, still operational. So the right of concerned, um, unprofitable stores. And now when they are reopened with new logo, they should become profitable. That's why um, we reverted the right of. The next question is about introducing home decor into reserved and since. Um, why did you make this decision? Observing what competitors are doing, what the customers uh, demand, what the customers are looking for. Very often, looking at uh, the demand for home decor and for the goods, how to call it, yes, the homeware, accessories for your home, accessories, uh, cosmetics, gadgets. These are really cool things that also Gen Z are buying uh, as presents, gifts for their peers and observing the market, what is selling well in Western countries. We also decided to um, expand uh, the range of products that we offer. And given the fact that we have uh, quite large stores, since it is 1000 uh, square meters on average, so uh, we can ensure proper display of such various um, products, also homeware. So we see the demand, we have been observing what is sold well, what is the demand. We are expanding our offer continuously and trying to follow the customer's needs. This demand actually started during COVID times where we spent uh, more time at home and we felt the need to beautify our home and ourselves. And this 
uh, has been observed uh, until today. So homeware in Sinse and reserved, um, this has been developed. Another question. In the balance sheet, the asset uh, intended to say we have 3 billion zloty and 1.7. What is the right of value for these assets? Uh, there are no write-offs for these assets yet. Um, the previous ones. Uh, we are preparing the Russian subsidiary for sale, showing its value on one hand, assets and liabilities on the other hand, because we have the missing amount, the um, equity of that company. We're preparing for the sale and we have not been doing any write-offs in this balance sheet. They will be done in the first uh, half year. Next question about plant floor space for the coming year. Still, we will be dynamically developing Sensei brand, looking at the pipeline of our projects or new openings for Sensei brand. We have seen quite a lot of contracts signed for 2023 already. So we are counting on, and this is actually the plan uh, in the long-term perspective, two, three-year perspective, so that we can increase by 15% the available floor space and 2024 by another 10 to 15%, mostly thanks to the development of the Sinsei brand uh, on European markets. Thank you. And another question concerning um, our development. When are you planning to open the first uh, stores in Italy? We are planning to open the stores in Italy and Greece. Uh, for December, this is what I can say now. We have been held, holding uh, conversations and talks with landlords. The first uh, stores uh, contracts have been almost settled. Looking at how much it takes, we believe that in this calendar year, the first stores will be opened. And it seems that we have um, exhausted the pool of questions. That was the last question. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for attending, for your presence during our conference. And we would like to wish you a great long weekend and summertime. And we strongly invite you to our next conference in October. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you.